Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, I will be explaining about the Satavahana phase. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into today's video. So as I have told, today's video is about the Satavahana phase or the Satavahana period. So first, before going to the topic, let us uh, see about the background that is Karavela. So Kalinga rose to power in the middle of the first century BC under the king Karavela. So the empire of Kalinga, it rose to power during the 1st century BC and it was under Karavela and much of the information so from where do we get information about the rule of Karavela much of the information about Karavela's rule uh, and his uh, military conquest all this information is available from the inscription of Hatigumba inscription of Hatigumba Hati Gumba. So from this uh, inscription we get much of the information about Karavela's rule and his military conquest from the inscription of Hatigumba and also uh, the elephant um, uh, cave in the Udayagiri hill in Orissa. So uh, from uh, inscription of Hatigumba the and the elephant cave in the Udayagiri hill in Orissa. Now he claims that his Karavela claims to have defeated the king of Western Dakan. Okay, he claims to have uh, defeated uh, the king of king of Western Dakan. So the Satavahana phase. We will start with uh, Karavela. So uh, Kalinga it rose to power in the first century BC under the king Karavela. And we get information about Karavela's rule and its military conquest mainly from the inscription of uh, Hatikumba, Hatikumba inscription. And he claims to have defeated the king of Western Deccan. And after uh, defeating the king of Western Deccan, Karavela is said to have occupied Rajagriha. Okay, Karavela is said to have occupied Rajagriha uh, to the north and conquered uh, Magadha and attacked the Greeks in the northwest. He attacked the Greeks in the northwest. Okay, northwest. So he is said to have occupied Rajagraha in the north and conquered uh, Magadha and attacked the uh, Greeks in the northwest and finally overrun the parts of Pandya kingdom. He is also said to have overrun uh, parts of Pandya kingdom, parts of Pandya uh, kingdom in the south of the uh, peninsula. So Rajagriha in the north and occupied uh, and conquered Magadha then attacked Greeks uh, in the northwestern side and finally overrun the parts of Pandya kingdom in the south of the peninsula. So this was about the uh, main conquest uh, done by uh, Karavela. So we get basic information from the uh, Hatigumba inscription. And on the death of Karavela, after the uh, death of uh, Karavela, Karavela, Kalinga uh, relapsed. Okay, Kalinga is said to have relapsed after the death of uh, 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 Karavela. So this much is the information uh, we should understand about Karavela. So let us uh, just go through the points once more. Okay. So the Satavahana phase. Karavela. Kalinga rose to power in the middle of 1st century BC under the king Karavela. And much of the information about Karavela's rule and his military conquest is available from the inscription of Hadikumba, the elephant's elephant cave in the Udayagiri hills in Orissa. He claims to have defeated the kings of western Deccan and occupied Rajagriha to the north and conquered Magadha, attacked the Greeks in the northwest and finally overrun parts of the Pandya kingdom in the south of the peninsula. On the death of Karavela, Kalinga relapsed into quiescence. So next, uh, the topic in detail we are going to learn is about the uh, Shatavahanas. 
okay so let us uh, understand the main points regarding the satavahanas satavahanas okay so the most important native successors of mauryas in the north were the shungas they were followed by kanva so if you see the mauryas the most important native successors of the mauryas in the north okay successors of mauryas in the north were the shungas after the shungas they were followed by the kanva so they were the successors in north west deccan in north west deccan on the ruins of mauryan empire there rose the kingdom of satavahanas okay so uh, the mauryas if you see the most important native successors okay here i can write the most important native successors of mauryas in the north were shungas and they were uh, followed by the kanvas but in northwestern deccan if we see on the ruins of the mauryan empire uh, the a new kingdom arose that is the shatavahana empire shatavahana dynasty and uh, with its center at pratisthana the satavahana rose to power with its center at pratisthana 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 is uh, modern uh, paithan in maharashtra okay so satavahana rose with the capital at pratisthana uh, or modern paithan in maharashtra that is in northwestern deccan on the ruins of satavahana uh, sorry on the ruins of mauryas the new dynasty rose now if you see the puranas sorry now if you see the puranas the puranas uh, speak only about the andhra <coughs> okay andhra rule the puranas or uh, speaks only about andhra rule but uh, they does not uh, speak about the not about the shatavahanas okay the puranas speak only about the andhra rule but not about the shatavahanas and the name andhra does not figure in shatavahana so this name andhra does not figure in uh, not in uh, shatavahana inscriptions inscriptions and in puranas the shatavahana name also is not coming there only the name andhra is coming and there is a lot of controversy regarding the original home of shatavahanas considering the uh, original uh, home of the shatavahanas there is a lot of uh, controversies uh, regarding the original home of shatavahanas now pre shatavahana settlements that is before uh, shatavahanas the pre shatavahana uh, settlements are indicated by the finds of red ware or black and red ware black and red ware potteries from uh, these uh, we can find out the pre shatavahana settlements from the um, you know, black ware or black and red ware red ware we can find the pre shatavahana settlements and the use of iron plowshare uh, use of iron plowshare uh, plowshare made of iron and also uh, the paddy transplantation paddy transplantation transplantation and the growth of urbanism the growth of writing all these uh, created condition for the state formation under shatavahana so it was after the pre shatavahana period uh, the use of iron plowshare the paddy transplantation system uh, the uh, urbanization uh, writing all these created condition for the uh, state formation okay state formation under the uh, shatavahanas <coughs> so in puranas if we see does not speak uh, uh, it speaks only about andras but not about shatavahanas and in shatavahana inscription we do not find the uh, name of the andras and there is a lot of controversy regarding the original home of uh, shatavahanas and in pre shatavahana settlement those pre shatavahana settlements are indicated by the red ware uh, the paddy trans uh, sorry red ware black and red ware etc indicates the pre shatavahana settlement now after that the use of iron plowshare paddy transplantation uh, writing uh, growth of urban uh, urbanization all these uh, created conditions for the uh, formation of uh, states under the shatavahanas so let us uh, just uh, see these uh, points 
okay the shatavahanas are the most important of the native successors of the mauryas in the north where the shungas followed by the kanvas in the northwest deccan on the ruins of the mauryan <coughs> sorry mauryan empire arose the kingdom of the shatavahanas in the 1st century bc with its center at pratisthana that is modern python in maharashtra the puranas speak only of the andhra rule and not of the shatavahana rule and the name andhra does not figure in the shatavahana inscription there is a lot of controversy regarding the original home of the shatavahanas pre shatavahana settlement are indicated by the find of black ware uh, black and red ware etc the use of iron plowshare paddy transplantation the growth of urbanism writing etc created conditions for the state formation under the shatavahanas so now let us uh, continue with the uh, topic shatavahanas now all the conditions uh, created conditions which is uh, suitable for the state formation under the shatavahanas now the earliest inscription of the shatavahanas uh, relate to the 1st century bc okay if we see the shatavahanas the earliest inscription okay earliest inscription of the shatavahanas relate to almost first uh, century bc when they defeated uh, when shatavahanas shatavahanas they defeated defeated kanvas that was the earliest inscription when shatavahanas defeated kanvas and established power in part of central india after defeating uh, kanvas they established power in uh, parts of central india okay so that is when the earliest inscriptions when shatavahanas defeated kanvas and uh, they established power in parts of central india now after that they gradually extended their power shatavahanas from there they extended uh, their power extended their power uh, over parts of karnataka and andhra parts of karnataka and andhra their power was extended and their greatest competitors the greatest competitors of shatavahanas if you see the greatest competitors uh, of shatavahanas okay the greatest competitors of shatavahanas they were the shakas okay shakas were considered to be the greatest competitors of uh, shatavahanas the founder of shatavahana dynasty that is a very important point the founder of shatavahana dynasty was simuka okay simuka was the founder of shatavahana dynasty now simuka and his uh, successors they established their authority from the mouth of krishna to the entire deccan plateau simuka and his successors is said to have established their power or their authority from the mouth of krishna the from the mouth of krishna to entire deccan plateau to the entire deccan plateau they is they are said to have established their power <coughs> now the earliest inscription of uh, shatavahanas it uh, relate to almost uh, first century uh, bc and uh, when this happened when shatavahanas defeated the kanvas and established power in parts of central india now after that shatavahanas gradually extended their power over parts of karnataka and andhra now the greatest competitors of shatavahanas are considered to be the shakas and shakas established their power in upper deccan and western india they were the greatest competitors of shatavahanas the founder of shatavahana dynasty was simuka and simuka and his successors uh, they established their authority from the mouth of uh, krishna river to the entire deccan plateau that is how they established their power now after that according to puranas so according to uh, puranas the shatavahanas uh, the uh, king killed the last kanva ruler of magadha and presumed the possession of his kingdom uh, that is according to the puranas the king killed the last uh, kanva ruler king is said to have killed the last kanva ruler kanva ruler and is said to have established or took the possession of his kingdom 
took the uh, possession of his kingdom. Okay, so according to uh, the Puranas, uh, the king uh, or the Shatavahana king is said to have killed the last Kanva ruler and after that he is said to have uh, taken the possession of the, his kingdom that is Kanva ruler's uh, kingdom. <coughs> and the earliest Shatavahana king who is famous and <coughs> who has got a lot of uh, recognition, the earliest Shatavahana king who received a wide recognition was Satakarni one. Even though Simuka was the founder, the king to receive widespread recognition was Satakarni one. And why is Satakarni one so famous or why did he receive so much recognition? It was due to his policy of military expansion. Due to his policy of military expansion, Satakarni one is said to have got a wide recognition. And <coughs> He is said to have uh, conquered a lot of places that is Shatakarni 1. His conquest, uh, so uh, if we see the conquest of Shatakarni 1, his conquest took him to the north of Narmada, north of Narmada and into eastern Malwa, into eastern Malwa, okay which at that time was being threatened by Shakas and Greeks. These areas were threatened by Shakas and Greeks. Okay. <clears throat> so, Shatakarni even if you see his conquest, his conquest took him to north of Narmada into eastern Malwa, which was threatened by the Shakas and Greeks. And Shatakarni even, he also gained control uh, over the region of Sanchi, region of Sanchi and an inscription there referred to him as Rajan Sri Shatakarni. So, he con got control over the region of uh, Sanchi and we get this information because one inscription there referred to him as Rajan Sri Shatakarni. Rajan Sri Shatakarni. And his next move, his uh, next uh, uh, conquest uh, was in the southerly direction and conquering the Godavari Valley. Okay. Next he wanted, next his plan was to conquer the southern uh, direction, southern direction and uh, also uh, the uh, Godavari Valley, Godavari Valley. So that was his next move, his next um, plan of conquest was in the southerly direction in the Godavari uh, valley and he f uh, felt entitled to call himself the lord of southern region, okay. He called himself the lord of southern region. So he conquered so many places in the south and he entitled himself as the lord of the uh, southern region that is Dakshina Patapati. That is how he called himself. He called himself as Dakshina Patapati. That is the lord of the southern region. That is how he entitled himself. That is Shatakarni 1. <coughs> and the next point we have to learn is after the reign of Shatakarni 1. So Shatakarni 1 uh, was known for his military conquest. After the reign of uh, Shatakarni 1 after his reign, the Shatavahanas were driven out of a western Deccan. Uh, Shatavahanas were driven out of western Deccan. After the rule of uh, Shatakarni 1, the Shatavahanas they were driven out of a western Deccan by the uh, Shakas of Kshatriya clan, by their enemies that is by uh, Shakas by the Shakas of Kshatriya clan, they drove the uh, Shatavahanas out of western Deccan. And uh, coins and inscription of Shaka chief Nahapana have been found around the Nasik region. So we can find this by the coins of a uh, Shaka chief that is Nahapana. Nahapana was a uh, Shaka chief. His uh, coins have been found in Nasik region. This indicates that there has been Shaka dominance in the area towards the close of 1st century or the beginning of 2nd. Uh, the coins are found in that area. So that shows that there has been a Shaka uh, 
dominance in that area. So that is how Shatakarni one came after his uh, rule, Shakas came, uh, which is proved by the coins. Okay. So let us just see the points which we have studied till now. Okay. So the earliest inscription of the Shatavahanas relate to the 1st century BC when they defeated the Kanvas and established power in part of central India. Gradually, the Shatavahanas extended their power over Karnataka and Andhra. Their greatest competitors were Shakas who established power in the upper Deccan and western India. The founder of the Shatavahana dynasty was Simukha and he and his successors established their authority from the mouth of Krishna to the entire Deccan plateau. According to the Puranas, the Shatavahana king killed the last Kanva ruler of Magadha and presumably took the possession of his kingdom. The earliest of the Shatavahana king to receive wide recognition was Shatakarni I. And this was due to his policy of military expansion in all directions. His conquest took him north of the Narmada into eastern Malwa, which at time was being threatened by the Shakas and the Greeks. Shatakarni I gained control of the region of Sanji and an inscription there referred to him as Rajan Sri Shatakarni. His next move was to the southerly direction and on conquering the Godavari valley, he felt entitled to call himself Lord of the Southern Region, that is Dakshina Patapati. After the reign of Shatakarni I, the Shatavahanas were driven out of the western Deccan by the Shaka of a Kshatriya clan. Coins and inscriptions of the Shaka chief Nahapana have been found around uh, Nasik indicating the Shaka dominance in the area towards the close of the 1st century AD or the beginning of the 2nd. So now uh, let us go to the next point. Okay. So after this, Gautami Putra, uh, now Shatavahana rule, uh, Shatakarni 1 came, then Shakas came. After that, the Shatavahana rule was re-established. Shatavahana rule was re-established established by another ruler called as Gautami Putra, Gautami Putra Shatakarni. Okay. So after Shat, uh, Shat, um, Shatakarni won, uh, the Shaka rules came and after that the Shatavahana rule was re-established by Gautami Putra Shatakarni. He drove uh, out the Shakas, he defeated the Shakas and he re-established the power. He is said to have destroyed the power of Shakas and pride of Kshatriyas. Uh, uh, that is uh, Gautami Putra Shatakarni is said to have destroyed uh, the power of Shakas <coughs> and the pride of the Kshatriyas. His achievements, that is Gautami Putra Shatakarni's achievements, okay, his achievements are said to have recorded in the Nasik Prashasti. Okay, Nasik Prashasti, his achievements are said to have recorded and this has been recorded by his own mother that is Gautami Balashri. By his own mother that is Gautami Balashri. Okay, so the achievements of uh, Gautami Putra Shatakarni is said to have been recorded in the Nasik Prashasti by his mother that is Gautami Balashri. Now he, um, uh, Gautami Putra Shatakarni ruled uh, what was his empire extent, okay. He ruled over wide area that is extending from Krishna in the south, okay, to Malva and Saurashtra in the north. Malva and Saurashtra in the uh, north and uh, Berar in the east, Berar in the east and Konkan in the west, okay, Konkan in the west. So this is how uh, the uh, rule of Gautami Putra Shatakarni extended, Gautami Putra Shatakarni, Shatakarni's rule extended from Krishna in the south to Malva and Saurashtra in the north, Berar in the east and Konkan in the west and all these are recorded in the Nashik inscription by his mother that is Gautami Banashri. 
So these were some points uh, regarding the introduction of uh, Shatavahanas. Now let us just go through these points once more. Gautami Putra Shatakarni was responsible for re-establishing Shatavahana power in this region by driving out the Shakas. He is said to have destroyed the power of the Shakas and pride of the Kshatriyas. His achievements are recorded in the Nasik Prashasti by his mother Gautami Balashri. He ruled over a wide area extending from Krishna in the south to Malva and Saurashtra in the north and from Berar in the east to Konkan in the west. So these were the introduction points regarding the Shatavahana dynasty. So I hope you have understood all the points very clearly. In case of any doubts you can ask in the comment session. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos. So I hope to see you all soon in the coming video. Thank you for watching.